Hey everyone, I'm Cynthia Conti for Ring TV, and you know, today is a very special day. But first of all, I get to be able to interview you for the first time in my career. This is the WBC president, Mr. Mauricio Suleiman. Did I get that right? I love that name. It's, it just rolls off the tongue. Not only, you know, today is, it marks a special day. It's the fourth year you've been the president of this amazing organization and also it is the passing of your father which is a bittersweet moment but it's not bitter it's more than sweeter than anything because you get to honor him now when you hear that knowing he was your your everything your hero everything that makes you who you are what does that mean to you talk to me about that well just being the son of Jose Sulaiman uh, is my greatest pride it opens the doors and the hearts of the people because my father was special. He simply was a great man, great human being, and in boxing, uh, any person I speak to, any boxer, any promoter, trainer, media, they, they remember him with happiness. And that is very, very heartwarming, and that has uh, given me the opportunity to continue his legacy. When, uh, when you think about that, what when you when you when he was president, what was the most memorable thing that stuck out to you that he loved the most about being the president of the WBC and also in boxing in general? He was very humble. He was very simple, down to earth, and his greatest moments were to be with the boxers. Whether it was Muhammad Ali, Tyson, or Chavez, or to be with a four rounder or an amateur fighter, he loved to talk to the young kids and give them hope and give them advice and give them just a, a warm message to continue uh, a dream. He always told everybody, never stop dreaming. Mm -hmm. The day you stop dreaming, you're dead. That, that is absolutely true because if you do that, then your soul is dead. Everything about that is dead. Now, before anything else, tomorrow, besides it's Valentine's Day, it marks a very special day. It's the 55th anniversary of the World Boxing Council. Now to be a part of that, how does that make you feel? I just got the goosebumps thinking about that right now. <laughs> besides it's cold, but I just got the goosebumps knowing that it's been such a big part of boxing history. How does that feel that you are now part of that history? It's, it's very gratifying. And it's, it's, it takes time to understand it. Mm -hmm. If I invite anyone, please go to YouTube and find a fight from the 60s or the 70s. I watched uh, Foreman against Lyle. Mm -hmm. And when you see everything that happens in that ring, it's so different from today. Yeah. Heavyweights with eight ounce gloves, oh my, yeah. smelling salts in the resting mm -hmm. period, which is so dangerous yeah. because the fighter that is almost out he gets up, but his brain is uh, yeah. alert, but he's getting the punishment. Yeah. Uh, the weight, the day of the fight, the 15 round fights, so many things that uh, were changed. And now we can see boxers live a very decent life after the ring. Before the ring, I mean the ring, not the ring. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Ah. <laughs> uh, before uh, those fights, those 13, 14, 15 round really took a toll yeah. on the health of the fighters. And to see them getting educated, to using the media to understand, uh, to see the clean boxing program working, because boxing is not a game. You don't play boxing. No. So you have to take care of your personal health. Any medicine, any performance enhancing drug that you take is gonna hurt your liver, your kidneys, your heart. Your life. Your life. Yeah. So it's a matter of just keep working. I'm very proud of uh, the WBC. I'm very proud of having so many people around that share the same values, the same principles. And I just want to make my father proud. Uh, you know, I wish a lot of people thought the same way of you, of having the same values. And because at the end of the day, two boxers go in it. Doesn't matter who wins as long as they come out healthy and back to their families. Now, talking about fights. You got a big fight, March and, or April. It's a 2,000th 2, 2, title fight. Like, that's, that's unheard of. Do you have the belt? Did you bring the belt here? It's coming. <laughs> I wanted to see this belt and put it around me, see the emeralds and, oh. 
Do you we, have? Uh, we we are we produce a beautiful belt. Yes, you do. That you will have exclusive. The first one to see it. Oh. Did you Ring TV exclusive? Ring TV exclusive. Okay. And uh, <laughs> we are in 1993. Uh -huh. We're approaching 2000. It's going to happen March or April. Okay. And the winner of that fight is going to get that belt as a commemorative piece. And we're going to start awarding trainers yes. a belt. I love that idea. Yes, because the trainer is the one that dedicates his life in many instances to that young kid yep. that co walks in the gym without knowing anything. Especially like their father. They're the father yeah. figure. They, they sacrifice. They dream together. They work so hard together. Yeah. And at the end, they deserve a belt. So we're going to institute it in the Fight 2000. We're going to begin that process. Oh, that's so exciting. Now, uh, for the 2000 fight, do you kind of know who the contenders are that are going to be fighting for this belt? For this belt? There's a few. It looks like it's going to be a Mam against Jorge Jose Carlos Ramirez okay. in New York City. That's Whoa. a that's a schedule that looks like. Okay. But uh, we will confirm in a couple of weeks if nothing changes. A fight might get done or a fight might get postponed or whatever. Yeah. But uh, it looks like it's going to be New York City, March 17. Oh well, that's I think that's kind of a cold time, but I, I'll probably be there front and center hopefully get to see that belt on one of those guys well, you have to carry the belt over there <gasps> i will totally carry the belt it's so exciting <laughs> i can i just wear it and just not put it i'll, I'll wear i'll be the first one to wear i will wear matching emeralds <laughs> <laughs> all right and that you know that you to, on a serious note you did mention something that's absolutely very very serious in our sport it's peds you said you mentioned something that boxer or fighters put some put things in their bodies that they don't even know they don't understand what's going in their bodies and then all of a sudden oh well sorry it's illegal how are you guys going about that with the fighters with the trainers everyone in their camp to understand even taking uh, drinking an energy drink could be liable to uh, losing your fight or before they even step in the ring it's education i'm going to give you an example bermain steven mm -hmm. he was training for a fight yep. he goes to gnc stores yeah. tells the attendant what he wants, he gives him a bottle, yeah. he goes to the gym, trains, and while the clean boxing program agent is testing him, he's making the shake. So that tells you it was absolute ignorance, yeah. absolute, uh, there was no bad faith. Yeah. And he told, he reported what he was drinking. Yes. So at the end, he was not guilty. Okay. But it's very uh, scary to know that you can go to a drugstore if you're feeling like a flu, you got something, you take things and you don't know what they are. So they should contact the WBC, they can contact VADA yeah. or just the physician. Okay. Explain what it is and then they will have information. Education is a key. We're spending a lot of money in a nutrition program for boxing because some or many of the positives in boxing are for diuretics yeah. to make weight. Yeah. So if a fighter has a nutrition program, a nutrition established program, that's gonna help eliminate all the concerns of PEDs. You know, there's something I always figure because I see fighters are always trying to make weight. They're dieting, they're sitting in a sauna for hours trying to lose that one or less, two pounds. That it's, it's, a, it's hard. Why can't they just kind of move up in weight? I mean, it's easier said than done, but why are they struggling so hard to go down in weight if they just go up in weight? It has to do with uh, many things. Pride, education, uh, opportunities, uh, culture. When you do something, you it's hard to understand that you have changed. When you are a lightweight, it's hard to understand you cannot make lightweight yeah. anymore. Yeah. Or a trainer responsibility saying you have to do this. Yeah. You have to make this weight. Don't be coward. Work hard. Sacrifice. It's many different elements. Uh, the ideal ways to have a nutritionist, to have a medical study of the body fat, mm -hmm. to have a good team behind you, to know where is a safe way that you have to fight. But it takes education, takes time, and, uh, and it takes uh, will okay. to do it. So 
it's a matter that it's getting there. It's we're much much safer than before. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Boxing has changed. I hope MMA uh, gets it right because they're suffering uh, tremendous tragedies with dehydration. Yeah. A boxer, a a wrestler, anyone in combat sports yeah. has the heart of a lion. Yes, they do. And they will do whatever it takes. Yeah. If you tell a fighter you got to fight 25 round fights, they will fight the 25 rounds. So it's a matter that the organizations, the commissions, and the boxing industry have to work together to make it better and safer. Oh, you guys heard that from the president himself. And you know, the slogan, WBC cares. That's, that's what's telling. Now, before I wrap up this interview, I want you, look in this camera, I want you to send a message. Your father is listening. He's watching down on you. Oh, I'm going to cry. Ha! <laughs> what would you tell him right now? Send a message. Papito, te adoro, te extraño. Todos los días pienso en ti. Gracias por darme todo lo que me diste. Y sigo tus pasos con mucho orgullo, mucho honor. Y no te voy a fallar. I'm not exactly sure what you said, but I want to cry already. <laughs> but I will get... You got me almost. <laughs> I know. Oh. Well, thank you. But they, thank you so much for taking the time out. Um, this is such a lovely day, lovely um, press conference that you are putting on for the media and for all Ring TV fans to watch. Oh, you're going to cry. I'm going to cry. <laughs> I didn't mean to. My eyelashes. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, make sure you guys check out all the WBC fights. You got to check out this belt. It is, it is beautiful. All right, guys. I'm Cindy Conti for Ring TV, and we have Mr. Mauricio Suleiman. All right, guys. I'm Cindy Conti for Ring TV. Bye, guys. See you guys at the fights.